A uh, typical yeah. ethical dilemma we are normally confronted with is when uh, the founder or, or a mm -hmm. second generation has to choose a successor yeah. and he has to choose between a family member, his son, for example, and uh, a non-family uh, top manager. And uh, we get this question many times. Is it fine if, uh, uh, if I appoint my son, who is very good, but probably there are also better people around? And, uh, you know, in family firms, we have to understand their goals are different. They are thinking about their identity. They are thinking about uh, the succession, you know, so who, is, who is going to take over, you know, wh when I leave, if I'm the founder. Or, or, and uh, they are thinking about uh, the bonds they have with society and with employees. And there is a lot of emotional issues also related to that. So yeah. it, is, uh, uh, it has been extensively researched. So many times a family prefers to have a family member who is competent uh, 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 instead of having a non-family member who is more competent because they know that they are uh, preserving their legacy and they are behaving in the family way. And what's so interesting about that is that the family believes that they're living by their ethical standards, which uh, has to do with loyalty to the family, but at the same time it's in conflict with another potential ethical standard, which is the value of the business, the profitability of the business, the employees and their um, salaries, and the customers and the other stakeholders involved, which is what something I think uh, going forward families are much more attuned to what we call stakeholders theory, yeah. which is the idea that the company has accountability to more than just the shareholders. And families do that naturally, and other businesses, I think, are now starting to uh, come along.